Hi, I'm going to be showing you a couple of ways uh, to vignette a photo. I've opened a colorful photo of one of my blooming trees. And the very first thing you have to do is change the background layer to a regular layer. Why? The background layer is locked. And the very last step you do when you vignette a photo is delete the area around the part you've selected. And uh, you can't do that very well when it's a locked background layer. So just put your cursor on the background layer, right click, and click on the very first option at the top, Layer from Background. The new layer dialog will pop up. You can give your layer a name if you'd like to. I usually just click OK. And then it changes to a new layer. Now you can do your editing. If you have to change the lighting, the contrast, you want to crop it, whatever you want to do. You do that now. You do vignetting is the very, very last thing you do to a photograph. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we're going to use for this first one simple, we're going to use one of the marquee tools. You can use the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool. We're going to use the rectangular. Now, up here in the options bar, starting at the left, make sure either New Selection or Add to Selection is highlighted. Feathering. This is a photo from my camera, so it's a fairly large, uh, fairly large size and a fairly good resolution. So I'm going to start by feathering this 60 pixels. Let's change it. Let's feather it 65 pixels. Okay. Anti-alias is unchecked. Mode is normal. Okay. Everything's the same. Now you want to kind of start from the middle of the photo. At least I do on this one. Now in your photo, you might want to, you know, select one person or whatever you'd like to do. But to start in the middle and to make your marquee selection uh, grow from the center where you click, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then it just goes like this. Okay. And then, boop. And you notice the corners are rounded. That's because of the large amount of feathering we have here. Now, the next thing you want to do is go to Select, Inverse, and then just press Delete on your keyboard. That does it. Then Control on your keyboard and press the letter D to get rid of the marching ants. And there's your vignette. Now, if you'd like, you can add a new layer by clicking, this is the new layer icon down here, or you can go to Layer, New Layer. You get the same thing. Click on it, drag it down below, and then you can put a color in there. You can fill it with white again. Uh, I always find it looks good sometimes to fill it with you know, a black. It depends on what you have there. You can even use a gradient. And you can, you know, put a gradient behind there and then lower the opacity if you'd like. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Now, if you're using, put this down here, open the project bin. I have a photo here that I downloaded from the web. And it has a resolution of 72. Now watch. Let me change the view. Fit it on the screen. Use the same marquee tool after I change the background layer to a regular layer. Hold down my Alt key. Kind of find the middle of it here. And I want it to be as long as my duck. Okay. And move it. You can click and drag it around a little bit if you want to. And uh, same thing. Select, inverse, delete. But see how, oh my gosh, it like disappeared. Okay, and there's a reason for that. It's because this is a very low resolution. So when you use when you use photos that you've downloaded from the web or that are web re resolution, Feather them about 30 or 35. Now when I do this, hold down the Alt key. And I can move it around up here a little bit. Okay. Um, and then select, inverse, 
delete. Now you notice it doesn't quite take much away. Control D. Okay. I could even take this down lower. I could um, vignette this one about 30. All right. Let's uh, close up the duck. Sometimes you might want to vignette using. Sometimes you might want to vignette using a, like a heart or an arrow or you know some custom shape and you can do that too let me get rid of all this okay back to layer zero down here uh you'll find a heart shape that's the custom shape tool notice there's a rectangle ellipse polygon tool you can do stars you can do whatever custom shape tool i am to pick the heart you can do any of these shapes if you want to see more shapes, click this little double arrow. You have all kinds of shapes in here. You could make it in the shape of a pineapple if you wanted to. Okay. There are symbols. You can make it in the shape of a question mark. Okay, let's go back to shapes. I'm just going to do a simple heart. And once again, this one now has some presets. I want it unconstrained. And I want it from the center. Okay, and I'm just going to go over here, trying to kind of find the center of my photo, and draw a great big heart. Okay, boom. You notice it's a shape. We're going to drag it below. And I'm going to turn off my flower layer so you can see it. Grab the magic wand tool. We're going to select it have to be simplified it's a vector layer we need it to be what's called a raster layer and now it has marching ants around it okay turn on your flowers and you'll notice you can see the selection in your photograph now come over here to layers palette click on it to highlight it because we want this flower shape changed we don't want the heart changed come over here to select feather and I'm going to feather this about 45 pixels and you'll see it decrease in size just a little bit I probably could now eh, let's do it some more select feather uh, let's feather 55 pixels okay you just do the same thing select inverse and delete and there you have uh, control D. Now, uh-oh, I see the lines. Well, you see the lines because this heart's still here underneath. So what you want to do is either right-click, delete layer, or what I usually do is right-click and drag it to the trash can. There you go. Now 55, yeah, that was a bit much. That makes it kind of too whatever -y there. So if I had to do this again... I would select feather. Let's go down to 40 pixels. Okay. And then select inverse delete. Get rid of my heart shape. Eh, might be a little better, but you can even tighten that up even more. Now, if you put a nice layer under it, and let's change this to a Pink color, okay, well, not that bright. Okay, use the paint bucket tool, make sure we're on the empty layer. There we go, whoops. You know why you can't do that? I still have a selection here, so it's only going to color what's selected. Control D, now I'll do it. There we go. That's a little too bright yet, so what you might want to do is use the opacity slider, slider down. Or you might even want to use a complementary color in here. Let's say instead of pink, one of my other favorite colors, let's put in a lavender. Okay. That's a little better, but not much actually. But anyway, you, you kind of get the gist of, uh, of how you can vignette your photos, how you can make a custom vignette, like a heart or a star or a flower or something. And, uh, 
I hope you have fun doing it. It's not really that tough to do. Like I said in my uh, description, depending upon the size and re resolution of the photo that you're vignetting, you know, you're going to have to do it and undo it and do it and undo it. Okay? Have fun.